My name is Alan Stenzlin. I'm a telecommunicator 911 operator here for the city of Cape Girardeau. We dispatch for both the police and the fire departments here in the city. My past history includes that of dispatching for a multi-agency Northwest Central Dispatch System in Arlington Heights, Illinois. I was police and fire dispatching there. I then moved on and became a paid on call firefighter EMT with the Buffalo Grove, Illinois Fire Department. And then I was hired with the Skokie, Illinois Fire Department where I was a firefighter paramedic for 29 years before retiring as a lieutenant for that agency. Inside the emergency dispatch center here, we have up to five to six telecommunicators that can be working at any one time, depending on the shift. During that time, there'll be one person that is dedicated to the police radio, one person will be dedicated to the fire department radio, and then up to two to three people could be call takers, where their job is to answer the 911 emergency lines that come in along with the non-emergency administrative lines that also come into our facility. So when you call 911, the dispatcher will pick up the line within the first ring or two, if at all possible. Uh, you'll hear a recording, 911, where's your emergency? What we're looking for right away is where is the emergency at? What is the location? Whether it's a address, name of a business, an intersection. If you're not familiar with the city and you're just traveling in, what's around you? Somewhere we can direct our emergency personnel in a moment's notice and get them there as quickly as possible to help with the emergency you're calling in about. So we're gonna to wanna to know the address first. We will ask for a callback number for if we get disconnected. The dispatchers will then begin asking a series of questions. They will want to know what's the emergency, how many people are involved, depending on what the emergency is, if it's a car accident, how many cars are involved. If it's a domestic type of situation, we'll be asking if there's weapons involved, if there's been any kind of substances that have been involved, uh, children involved in the situation. So a lot of questions get asked and during that time, people will sometimes get impatient with us and we'll say, just dispatch somebody, get somebody here. While that information is being taken by that call taker, the person that's on the radio will be dispatching officers and or the fire department at that point to that emergency. So just because the dispatcher is talking to you for a long period of time, doesn't mean that the personnel are not being sent to your location for that emergency. So stay on the line with us, remain calm, and answer the questions that the dispatcher is asking. They are very important so that we can give that information to our personnel to keep them safe and the situation to be resolved quickly. Some of the challenges we face in here have to do with third party calls that come in. People will say that their child has called them and they've been involved in an accident or they see a suspicious person outside their apartment where they live. Being here with the university, we get a lot of calls sometimes from students, parents, where the student has called the parent and said, well, there's a suspicious person that's lurking around outside. The problem with third party calls is that we're not getting the needed information so that we can tell the officers that are responding what's going on. They'll say, my son or daughter has called and this person's outside, I need you to send somebody. Well, what does this person look like? Are they still there? Are they in the front or the back of the building? Are they at the door? These are, this is all information that's needed and a lot of times they'll just say, well, I don't know, they just told me that they need somebody to go over there and check. So as much information that can be provided by the party that's involved is what's important to us so that we can get that information out to the units that are responding. Along with dialing 911, we do have some tools that are available to us. When dialing 911, we do have the ability to get a general area of where you're calling from, as long as the phone remains on and in an operating order. We can determine how far that phone call is coming from, whether it's five meters, 10 meters, 20 meters from this location. So it gives us an area we can send personnel to. We also have some other tools that have become available to us. One of them is called a prepared live, where the dispatcher, if you will allow them to, send a link to your phone where you can actually send us a picture of where you're at or what is going on at that time. Another tool that's available to us in the 911 is the texting 911. If you're unable to talk to us, you can text 911 and we have the ability to have a conversation with you over text and get the information also. Our mission and our goal here in the 911 Center is to serve and protect the community. 
We don't chase the bad guys. We don't put out the fires. However, we are the first responders that you talk to. So as much information you can get to us as calmly and as clearly as possible will make the difference in accomplishing this mission together.